Hey everyone, welcome to the Sports Reverence Podcast. My name's Dan. And my name's Drew. We are the Sports Reverence. Let's get right into it today, Drew. Uh, we love sports. Let's talk about some basketball today. Um, right. NBA, the big topic from last night is load management. Tell me a little mm. bit of your thoughts on load management coming from a perspective of a fan. Well, from the perspective of a fan, I can see why it's a little annoying because, you know, you pay your money to come to a game and sometimes the guy that you came to see isn't playing. And I, like for me growing up, I know I only went to one or two games a year, whether that was hockey, but if I went one game and the best player, or my favorite player wasn't playing, that'd, that'd be a bit of a waste, wouldn't it? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So tell me a little bit of perspective from if you were a GM. Yeah, well, this is this is the big argument right now with the Clippers, and you know they just got fined fifty thousand dollars today for for their inconsistency on their status reports on Kawhi Leonard. But I think for a GM, you really have to decide what you're what you're trying to do because if you look at last year with the Raptors, Kawhi is holding the holding the trophy at the end of the day, and I think I think GMs will trade those uh, little fines that the league gives for, for championships at the end of the day. So the one thing I see with the Raptors when they had Kawhi and they load managed was that they went 17-5 and five without Kawhi. Right now, yeah, the Clippers are 0-3. What indication do you think that this has for the Clippers going forward and the playoff picture and all that? Well, I don't think you can... I don't think it's a true representation of who the Clippers are right now because they're without Paul George who would be who's one of the top players in the NBA as well definitely, and, uh, definitely. so I think you don't have a true picture of who they are when they're without Kawhi um, but I think when uh, Paul George comes back I think Paul George will be taking some nights off too and hopefully they'll They'll work those out so one of them is at least playing every game. Yeah, definitely. I, I see the debate from both sides. Like, I, I want to know if Kawhi Leonard's actually struggling with an injury. I know, to me, as a Raptors fan, it made a lot more sense last year that he's coming off a whole year off in San Antonio, and we don't know what to expect with him going forward, that we load-managed him, and it worked out well because we were in the weak East. In the West... They probably will get by once Paul George is back. But I wonder, is he still struggling with an actual injury or is it just purely to get him to the playoffs healthy? And that to me is where, like, you see Michael Jordan call him out again for you get paid to play 82 games. You see Giannis saying that's the, that's the easy way out to take. Why is he load managing? You know, that's, that's a buster kind of move. Yeah, I, I understand that you get paid to play 82 games, but I think the reason why Kawhi got paid so much is because he's a beast in the playoffs. And we've seen him in the finals three times, and he's won twice. And he's won finals MVP twice. Like, So I think you're paying him to get you championships. And I think the NBA's regular season has become less and less crucial over the last couple of years with top heavy conferences. And, and I think, I think from a management perspective, from a player's perspective, I, I think, uh, I think they're fine with the way Kawhi is handling it. So do you think like in the West this year, it's pretty evenly one through eight, maybe nine. Do you think that their seating really plays a purpose or plays a, a big, a big purpose in, in the playoffs? Will it affect their playoff run? Yeah, I, it's hard to say. Like, they are such a good deep team that uh, I don't think it would matter all that much if they if they didn't have home court. Like, let's face it if they're if they're playing the Lakers, whether they have home court or 
not, I think yeah. it's a road game. Like, True. So I don't think that matters as much if, if that's who they're battling it out for first place. Um, yeah, I, what do you think? Do you think the Clippers need that home court advantage to get, make it through? I think at the end of the day, obviously it's more important if Paul George and Kawhi are healthy. Right. I think that they don't win if one of them isn't. Yeah. At the same time, I don't think... I think home court does play a big role in things, too. I think there has to be a better uh, adjustment from maybe the Clippers to not let Kawhi rest maybe as many games, maybe work in some of his rest into, like... They're going to be winning many games. So there's one game already this year where he didn't play the fourth quarter, had 30 points. Uh, Maybe they reduce minutes or something like that. Because for them to fall below even the fourth seed and they're going to be playing every game on the like have the series on the road, that's going to be tough, I think, going ahead. The West is so loaded. You're going to get beat up coming out of the West. So. Yeah, but I don't, I don't. I don't think they fall be below four if you have one of Paul George or Kawhi playing. Right? Their supporting least... cast is playing so good right now. Can they sustain that? I guess. Oh, yeah, like Lou Williams yeah, is a maybe. beast, and Montrezl Harrell is is getting better too. And I, I think they have a great deep team. They play great defense. And uh, with Paul George and Kawhi, like that, that's only going to boost their defense. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't think deadly. I don't think there's a chance. I don't think there's a chance if one of them is playing in every game. Once Paul George gets back, I don't think there's a chance they fall below four. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good uh, that's a good debate for sure. What do you think is going to happen with LeBron and AD going forward? Do you see them having some load management? Going forward, well, I I don't think I don't think uh, LeBron can keep up the pace that he's at right now. Like I know he's trying to have this whatever he calls it revenge season or yeah. whatever's going on, but just to claim the throne. Yeah, like we're Reclaim still looking at he's aging, and yeah. it it's gonna catch up to him at some point these minutes. But we also see that halfway through the season, LeBron usually takes about a month off of playing hard. So I don't know. They look really good right now. Um, they probably look like the best team in the NBA right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, six and one, they, they played really well. LeBron's been playing out of his mind. Yeah. Um, AD's had Kuzma's some big been, games. Yeah. AD's been solid and that's yeah. what you expect. Kuzma's but been th- slow to think, get back into it. I think what we've talked about though, um, is that they need to solve sort of a point guard situation there because I don't think, I think you can reduce the workload for LeBron just by having him off ball for at least a portion of the game. Yeah. And I don't know if the Lakers can trust their, their backup point guards. Do you think like Rajon Rondo makes that difference? Well, there's another guy that's looking a little long in the tooth, you know, like he's, he's yeah. not a, He's not what he used to be defensively. He's never been an offensive, you know, he's never been able to shoot. So, yeah, I don't, I, I like Caruso's been looking good. Quinn Cook is hit or miss, right? But, yeah, I think they need to solve that problem. I don't know what they can do to go out and get a solid point guard. Like, you sort of need sort of like what the Clippers have with Patrick Beverly. I love I love that fit for them. But yeah, that's huge, eh? Yeah. The Rockets must look be looking real sad because they had they had so many nice pieces that they've given up, and now they're those pieces are making big differences, uh, right. just like Pat Bev. My point though is, I just think if you're going to load manage, at least don't do it on big nationally televised games that people have circled on their calendars. Like if Kawhi sits out on Christmas day, that'll be a travesty. And if you look at it in terms of ESPN and TSN, okay. So ESPN had them, uh, had their national televised game yesterday, but he sat, sits out against Antetokounmpo. But today TNT has their nationally televised game. They get Kawhi. So 
there's going to be some some sort of repercussion that has to happen. I don't know. Do it yeah. against when they play like, someone crappy. Like, come on. Yeah, and like what I said before, as we were talking beforehand, was I I would rather see from a fan's perspective at least. Um, and I know you you kind of disagree with this. Is is I I I would rather see him take his load management games at home rather than on the road. Um, just because uh, your home fans get to see you forty one times, yeah, in the year, and you know some of these places you go to, you're only coming once a year, and you're the hot ticket. Like you get a ticket to go see Kawhi, you're probably gonna have to spend a lot of money to go see the Clippers now on yeah. the road. And and if I show up and he's not playing, and I just spent whatever two hundred bucks to go see you, I'm gonna be pretty upset. But that's yeah, just I my agree. Opinion. No, I think. I get that. Uh, I was just thinking for their home fans, that's who Kawhi and the Clippers care about. If but I, as a home, was, but a home Clippers fan, I think you kind of want him to more. load manage, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. I get that. Yeah, that's because true. even with load management, Kawhi was hobbling to the finish last year. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No one talks about how in the playoffs after that Sixers series, he actually looked hobbled. For a lot of the Bucks series. Well, he could barely walk. Like when yeah. he went up to the foul line, he looked like he needed a wheelchair. That's true. That's true. I just think they should find a way to at least maybe announce it earlier or just give fans a heads up, something like that. Uh, make it a little bit better for fans going forward. They should care about the fans a bit more. Yeah, then... I agree with that. Okay, let's talk about Raptors quickly. Do the Raptors have a legitimate title run? I'm going to say they do. The East is so weak that watching the Bucks, watching the Sixers, I'm just... Both teams have gotten worse than last year. And the loss of Brogdon to the Bucks, the loss of Butler from the Sixers, I'm not sold on Boston. I think the East is wide open. And the Raps, uh, they, have a, they have something... They have this whole team identity that it's all about team. They don't care about stats as much. It's all about team. Let me yeah. get your thoughts first before I continue. Well, I think they have a legitimate shot in the East. But my my whole long-term perspective on this is you're not going to win the championship this year. Um, your team's getting older, like Kyle Lowry, Serge Ibaka, Marcus Gasol. They're not getting any younger. Yeah, I think it's this year, with Kyle Lowry still having another year left on his deal, I think this would be the time to leverage him and uh, maybe getting some picks, maybe getting some younger, younger uh, point player, whatever, whatever you can get. I know we were looking through the teams before. We couldn't really come up with a good fit for who Kyle Lowry would go to. But I think now this year is the time to do that. Yeah, I get that. I definitely get that. It seems... There's two rumors we, we hear being in Toronto is that, okay, because he signed an extra year, it's easier to trade him, or they actually signed him an extra year as a loyalty kind of thing. Right. Uh, uh, it's hard to say what they're going to do. Well, because no one's going to take his full contract, even if you do figure out a way yeah. to trade him. I don't, I don't think anyone's taken, what is it, 34? 34 uh, million? Something like that. 34, 31, or something like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, not a super max, it's a max deal, basically. Right. This is what I'm thinking, though, too, is that this year, they're probably not going to get good enough value back for a Serge Ibaka or Marcus All or even Kyle Lowry. Play out the year, see what happens. They, I read this book from Pat Riley. It's called Showtime. It's an older book. Um, it talks about the, su- the sustained success of the Lakers back in the Magic Johnson era. And um, basically, it talks about how after you win one championship, egos go crazy, right? Everyone wants more shots, more money, uh, more limelight. It was a really cool uh, uh, interview I saw between Bill Simmons and Isaiah Thomas about the Showtime book by Pat Riley. Isaiah Thomas for the Bad Boy Pistons. He was talking about um, the success that they saw in Detroit was because 
they didn't they put all the egos all the money aside they didn't ha- they're the first team to win that didn't have a player average more than 20 points a game they were literally one to tw- one to 12 they were a unit and they worked together it reminds me a lot of this raptors team that are people are counting out yeah i think that the raptors can really sustain this high level of play pascal is going to continue to get better you've seen the rise of og already and he's going to get better and Lowry's kind of that 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 dog you know he's like that isaiah thomas kind of fighter that's gonna get his numbers but also keep the keep the ship running and with the Mm. east just the way it is if kevin durant was back brooklyn's taking it um but the the bucks they don't have enough there sixers there's not enough shooting they may need a point guard and they have no bench the raptors have that consistency the youth and they have that one through 10 11 that have bought into this winning culture, winning system. And I think they can make a good run and potentially, I think, make a title run. I think when they make the finals, they'll probably lose. But I think they have a chance to get there at this point. Yeah, in the East. That's, my whole, that's my whole point though, right? Like, yeah. Is getting to the finals uh, a good enough goal to well, warrant keeping guys like that? Yeah, well, like I think establishing that winning culture uh, would attract someone like Giannis who wants to be in a winning culture. Giannis who has relationship with Masai, who Masai helped get out of of uh, his home situation, and um, and 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 the, the the he needs a he needs to have a team put around him. Right now, Milwaukee's getting even worse from last year. I don't know how I don't they let think... Brogdon go. Yeah. I... I don't think Toronto can ever count on signing free agents. I think they need to do it through trades. And that's why I'm thinking now is the time to, to make a trade for whether it be picks or up and coming players. Um, yeah, yeah. Like if they can package, if they can package Lowry and Marcus all for a team that is struggling, that has a star, let's say, the one that's been on my mind is Washington Wizards. Give me Bradley Beal. We'll yeah. give you cap space, right? Yeah, right. Um, cap space, maybe even a pick going forward. You get Bradley Beal on our team, but then you lose Gasol and Larry. Like, that's a lot to give up, too. So it's a tough debate. I could see them just running it back this year and playing the draft. And I think the culture of winning change is, is changing and hopefully that debate of team players not wanting to sign in toronto doesn't stay at least right. that's my hope yeah that's always the hope but i just yeah. don't think you can count on that at that at this point well i guess we'll just have to wait and see we will we'll just have to wait and see okay quickly drew give me your surprise up and coming nba team that has put a light bulb up for you uh, for me, it's been, I don't know if it's that surprising, but the Miami Heat have been a huge surprise with their rookies stepping up. Yeah. Uh, now getting Seriously. Jimmy Butler back is, is huge. He's, he's a beast. Um, Myers Jimmy Leonard Butler's taken on like that almost facilitator kind of role too. He's not yeah. even a leading scorer. Yeah. Again, I'd, I'd like to see how long that lasts just with his history of. Yeah, Exactly turning locker rooms upside down. But I like their yeah. big guys. You know, Adebayo has been really good. Myers Leonard. Yeah, Kelly Myers Olenek. Leonard's been really nice. The They've Jimmy got a good Butler, group of guys. Yeah, speaking to the locker stuff, he, he already said something about a locker room situation that happened in Philly, which was one of the reasons why he left. And he said it's going to come out when the time's right kind of thing. Yeah. So... But whenever I hear stuff like that, it's always common denominator, right? Like, and it always seems to be him in the yeah, middle of exactly. things. So. Oh, I, I 100% agree with that. I love Kendrick Nunn and and uh, the hero. Yeah, they seem pretty pretty big. And Justice steals. Winslow too, and yeah, he's been really good. This is uh, had a couple in couple games off with an injury, but he's been really good. Yeah. Okay, you take the heat, eh? I'm gonna go with the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, I like cannot it. believe it. I cannot believe it. DeAndre Ayton is out. They're still playing 
very good basketball. All of their off-season uh, acquisitions have been fantastic. Uh, they've just been good, solid veteran NBA players, Ricky Rubio, Tyler Johnson. They've just been very, very good in that sense. Aaron Baines. Aaron Baines has been oh, their, their best lineup has Aaron Baines, yeah. Saric, Oubre, yeah. Booker, and Rubio. All these outcasts. Yeah. So I just love how hard they're playing too. Eh? It's really, really yeah. cool. To Frank see. Comiskey. Com- yeah, man. He's been good. Devin Booker is like, I've last year I would view him as an overrated scorer. Yeah. This year, I view him like to me, he's a star. He looks that yeah, good. He is. Yeah. I think so, I think people always saw that in him. And, yeah. And I think it's just consistency that held him back. But like he's hitting fifty percent of his three pointers this year. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's That's ridiculous. crazy. Fifty three percent from the field. So efficient, and even his defensive end of things, like he's looking solid. Well, he's so, so long. Like yeah, such a him and Ubre. Oh my goodness, I've never yeah. loved Kelly Ubre Jr. But this year he's uh, he's. He's showing something that he's got something to prove. He's got that chip on his shoulder. Yeah, for sure. I like that pick, and they're and they're playing each other today. Yeah, play, that's good. Uh, yeah, it should be a good matchup. I think um, the Phoenix Suns will still not make the playoffs this year, but they're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Hopefully, Aiden comes back and gets his life in order, and then jump to some NFL. Drew, first of all, who's your early season MVP? MVP for me right now is Christian McCaffrey, run CMC. He's just doing everything uh, shout out to for the CMC. Panthers. Yeah, shout out to CMC. But just unbelievable. Like From running the ball and catching the ball, he's just doing everything for that team. Uh, he's playing, I don't know, 95% of snaps or something like that. He's just super durable. Um yeah, and with Cam out, he's had to do more, and he's stepped up to the challenge. Is he your most exciting player to watch right now? Oh, for sure. He's just so fast. Like yeah. When he he can kick it into that extra gear, and uh, yeah, I love watching him play. Elusive, fast, and he's got power. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And like his vision he, is incredible. He doesn't let the big hits get to him. Like He sort of just bounces off them. Like It's crazy. I love the pick, CMC. Um, I also, I don't know if, I, my MVP is right now Russell Wilson. Yeah, I great think pick. they're going to win their division, and um, he's got a lot going on too. Although my favorite player to watch right now is probably Deshaun Watson because he's just yeah. a balling right now. Yeah, he, he was, he, I was going back and forth. Um, I had all three of those guys in my MVP race. Yeah, uh, throwing Lamar Jackson too. Yeah, yeah, especially with what he did last week. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't – I think just consistency-wise, I, I love uh, Russell Wilson and McCaffrey. Just week to week, they're, they're beasts. Beasts. Okay, yeah. let's talk about another beast. He's been injured most of the year. He's got a shaky future going ahead. If you're the Carolina Panthers, what do you do with Cam Newton? Well, I think it all depends on how you feel about Kyle Allen, um, whether you think he can turn into a, a franchise quarterback, which I don't. But I also don't think Cam Newton is who we thought Cam Newton was, like when he won the MVP. And I, I don't think he's a dominant quarterback anymore. He's not accurate with the ball. And uh, the, the hits have caught up with him. Uh, I don't trust him. I'd I'd like to see him move off of Cam Newton for sure. Maybe go get a quarterback, uh, trade up in the draft, go get a quarterback in the draft if you don't think Kyle Allen's the guy. But, yeah, I I would move off of Cam Newton for sure. So you're saying Cam Newton, does he have a place in the NFL anymore? I think he has a place. He's he's definitely better than Mitchell Trubisky. But, yeah. uh... <laughs> Who's also, he's he's the 31st ranked uh, fantasy quarterback right. as of last week. Yeah, but I I just, yeah, I don't think Cam Newton and the way the Panthers play, like, I don't know. What do you think? Tell me what I you think. I think I'm still a Cam Newton fan. I think he's got that 
talent. I think he can improve in the pocket if he needs to be. But I think he's just going to, this year, he's going to take the rest of the year off. He's going to get healthy. And I think I think for sure Carolina is going to move on from him. Um, I think he's going to get healthy. Whatever team they ship him off to, he's going to show why he's Superman. I think he's that good. He's that good to command so much. We have to remember when he was in Carolina for so long, he had zero weapons. Christian McCaffrey had just got there and who is he throwing? His top receiver has been Greg Olson. Benjamin. Yeah. Well, Greg Olson's also injured like 60 to 75% of the games. So he's had not very many options. His best receiver has been Calvin Benjamin. Like, come on, give Cam Newton some targets. If I'm Carolina, I'm keeping Cam Newton for one more year. He's only costing them $19 million, which is less than the average QB1 franchise quarterback cost, which is about $23 million a year. I'm keeping Cam. Give him one more shot. See how far he takes you. Now that they have McCaffrey balling out, maybe they can pick up another offensive weapon for him that, you know, give him a target to throw to. So. What do they have? They have DJ Moore. Who else they got? Curtis Samuel. Come on, Curtis Samuel. He's a good player. He's okay. I'm saying they they got to go get him. And regardless, they don't have Cam Newton. They got to get another. They got to get another option there. And if they get rid of Cam Newton, to your um, to your argument is that they save nine. Well, I guess eighteen million because they have to pay Kyle Allen. So. They save eighteen million, then they can pick up, bolster their roster. You don't have to. But pick I'm a Cam Newton for fan, a while, man. though. Yeah, that's true. It and gives you time to figure out what he is. Yeah, that's true. And what is he though? You 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 really sold on Kyle Allen? Like, didn't they just I'm, lose fifty one tonight? I'm not tonight? sold on. I'm not sold on Kyle Allen at all. But I'd like them. I I'm. You don't like Cam less... that much. Yeah, I don't like him that much. How long ago? Like, was it was it two years ago? He's an MVP. Yeah. And you just that's just it. That's it. Yep, that's it. Okay. That's it for me. That's it. Okay. Well, okay. Let's talk a little bit fantasy. If you're in need of a fantasy pickup, your team's on the bubble. Talking fantasy football. Your team's on the bubble. You probably already have an okay quarterback. What are you picking up? Uh, I don't know. My team's just so good. I don't need to pick anybody up. Who, who, who season, do you think? The season's early, Drew. I you don't want to win this half of the season. Uh, the, well, Miami Dolphins running back. They got rid of Drake, right? So... Patrick Laird is their their number one guy now. Yeah. So uh, he could be a good pickup for for running back. I like Zach Pascal from Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. He's had a yeah. good uh, good couple of games here with the receiving the ball there for Jacoby. And I love the deep threat of Ted Ginn Jr. Now that that Mr. Drew Brees is back. So those are my three guys. I'd say pick up. What do you think of, you know, another guy is Josh Reynolds, too. He's, uh, Brandon Crooks is out yeah. this week. Pick up Josh Reynolds. Yeah, he, he was big last year, for sure. Yeah, I know. And Jared Goff and the Rams, I'm telling you, they're balling now. They're going to turn it up. They're going to make a, a a good push for wild card, I'd say. And Ola B.C. Johnson from uh, okay. Minnesota with Thielen out. Nice. Yeah, Might be for a sure. Pick. Yeah. Well, that's going to um, be a good game. Vikings Kirk Cousins has been Kirk Cousins has been playing really well the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Do you think that sustains? He's played some pretty bum yeah. teams. Yeah. And it seems like whenever the lights get brighter, he he uh he plays worse. He yeah, he's a yeah. folder. Yeah. I'd also go out and pick up either uh Jack Doyle or Eric Ebron if they're available. I know Yeah. Tight ends this year have been pretty scarce to come by but those are two guys with ty out they'll get heavy targets 
If you so, do need a quarterback, I'm saying go pick up Tannehill. Yeah, for sure. If you want to yeah. take a risk, uh, Cincinnati Bengals, shout out to Cody Allum. Yeah. They're uh, 0 and 8. How you doing, Cody? They uh, they're finally not going to start a ginger at quarterback. Yeah, Andy Dalton big, has been big benched. Deal. Last week they had a bye, and they let Andy Dalton know a week before that that they're benching him on his birthday. So their backup quarterback is available. Oh, well, I guess he's their starter now. I just don't understand. If you're going to bench Andy Dalton, do it before the trade deadline and trade him. Yeah, That's but you're not going to get anything back for Andy Dalton at this point. You don't think you get a pick? If you're the Bears, you're not taking no. Andy Dalton? No. No. Well, no, like, I, I, I'm just, I, I think Bears, Browns, they're just travesties to me. Yeah. Those guys. Uh, are... Another another deep uh, a pick might be Brandon Allen from the Broncos. After, All right. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. If you have a two-quarterback league, you look yeah. pretty good. Yeah, but yeah, like, I I don't think Andy Dalton's that good, and uh, I just yeah just avoid him I'd at stay all costs. Avoid okay. him. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's it for us today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you like us, share us, everything, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you got. And uh, make sure you tune in uh, the next time and send us some questions, what you want to hear, what you want us to talk about. Anything else, Dan? Keep sending those fantasy sports questions to next week. Hopefully we can do a uh, to bench or not to bench segment. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Peace out, world. <laughs>